Hi everybody, Kim here at Olive City Homestead and in today's video I want to share with you all about red roselle hibiscus, otherwise known as rosella or Florida cranberry or Jamaican sorrel. It has lots of names. I think most commonly these days it's known as rosella or red roselle hibiscus. But what can you do with it? Well, most people make tea with it and oh, it is a great tea. However, there are lots of other things you can do with it. Yes, jam, but more. Now, before I ever used red roselle hibiscus in tea or anything else, I used to think maybe it would have a flowery taste and I really wasn't into things that tasted like that. So I was a little hesitant. However, after trying it, I was so excited because the taste is actually very tangy, very citrusy, just very, very lovely. I absolutely adore it. And so I wanted to expand what I do with it. But this year we started out, you know, pretty traditionally. I dried some, as you'll see, for tea and I made some great jam. So let's start with that and then after that we'll get into a few other interesting things that you can do with it, including something I baked up this morning. So I harvested the bulk of my rosella about a week and a half ago and dried some for tea and made my jam about three days later. Fresh rosella keeps nicely for five or six days, but you can also freeze it. For only two plants started late this year, I was amazed at how much fruit they produced, and this was a second harvest. Now it's time to make the rosella jam, and the first step is to peel off all the outer parts of the ruby red calyxes. So I've washed the rosella thoroughly, and you know, I didn't find any little bugs, no ants or anything. I just found two solitary pincher bugs. Uh, and you will find probably at least one or two bugs in a good sized harvest of roselle. Now, once you've separated the seed pods from the petals, don't throw them out because you can simmer them for about 20 to 30 minutes to release all of their natural pectins. And this is going to make your jam thicken up super nicely and super naturally. And don't forget to put some of your roselle petals in your dehydrator or if you have an outdoor drying rack to dry them for tea because, wow, rosella tea is delicious. You don't want to waste any part of the red roselle hibiscus because it's all edible. And the bottom part, the part I call the collar <laughs> underneath the seed pod, that is totally usable as well. So it's going right in with everything else to boil and simmer to make my jam. All right, the rosella has been simmering now for 30 minutes and you can see it's starting to thicken and the petals are all getting quite mushy. They're, oh, there goes the steam. Um, they're beginning to dissolve and that is what they're going to do. I'm gonna give this probably another 20 minutes and it will be ready to add the sugar. So the pods have been simmering for about 30 minutes now and you can see they have turned the water a lovely rose color and the water is really thickening up as the pods are releasing their pectin. I'm going to add a little bit more water, maybe half a cup more and let them keep simmering while I finish up simmering the roselle. All right, I have measured the cooked rosella and I have about two and a half, a little more than two and a half cups of the cooked mixture. And now I've just measured out my pectin juice, as I'm calling it, the pod water that has simmered for about 40 minutes total. And I have almost a cup of that. I'm adding that to the simmered rosella. So now I'm gonna be at this point having about uh, three and a quarter, between three and a quarter and three and a half uh, cups of this mixture. And that's important to know your measurement there because you're gonna add an equal amount of sugar to make your jam. Now, after a while, if you've made this once or twice, you can start experimenting adding less sugar if you want to. But if you've not made it before, I'd suggest the first time going ahead and doing it the standard way by adding the exact same amount of sugar as you have mixture. This is a very tart jam, um, so you do need the sugar. It's got a flavor most people say a combination of rhubarb and lime and I have to agree I think that's a great description for it it does taste a lot like both rhubarb and lime 
um, very citrusy, but with that special tang that rhubarb has. So, uh, you know, probably should just say it tastes like roselle because it is its own unique flavor. But yeah, I'm going to add about uh, three cups of sugar. That is a little less than I said. Uh, if I want to be exact, I'd add about three and a quarter cups. So maybe I'll do that. We'll see. All right, I'm mixing three cups of sugar in. That's what I decided to use. It's almost a, an exact ratio. Uh, so I'm going to let this cook for probably another 20 minutes on low. It's going to thicken up even more. And then we're going to do the test on a cold plate to see if it stands and doesn't run. And then we'll know it's ready to put in my sterilized jars. So I'll meet you back here in a minute. I'm going to test this jam now. Uh, don't mind the dough there. I'm, uh, I'm making pizza at the same time. So I have put this on a very cold plate that I had in the freezer, and I'm tilting it. And you can see it's running, but very slowly. But I'm going to cook it another 10 or 15 minutes and see if I can get less of a run on it. All right, that's not running anymore. Time to put it in my jars, which I pre-sterilized, and then I'm going to give it a water bath canning for 10 minutes. I use a nice wide mouth funnel to fill my jars. It looks like I'm gonna get at least three jars, maybe four. The jam turned out fantastic. It gelled very well with the pectin from the seed pods, and it looks wonderful. Now I'm going to see what it tastes like. Now I'm going to test the jam on some sourdough toast because I do love sourdough, but I also think it will be great with biscuits. But let's put it on this toast and see what I think. I have a feeling it's going to be great. As you can see, nice and firm. I mean, look at that color. It's so rich ruby red. It looks beautiful. But how does it taste? That's the real question. Oh boy. Guys, that is wonderful. Oh, that really surpasses my expectations. All right, you all have to try that out because that is one great jam. Mm-hmm. Definitely making a lot of that next year. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to enjoy it this year. And here's what I made this morning. Red Rosella scones with a lemon glaze. All right, all right. I'm not going to eat it all but I am gonna try some for you here on camera. Now, these scones in the foreground, they are mixed berry scones, and the tops were coated with coconut cream and sprinkled with a coarse sugar. And the mixed berries are blueberries and raspberries and blackberries. Uh, they were frozen from a harvest from last year, and then I let them uh, thaw out today before I put them in the batter. I wasn't sure how the red Roselle hibiscus scones would do, how they would taste, how, just how they would turn out, so I thought I'd better, you know, do half and half so at least some of them would come out great. But in the end, they all came out great. And you might notice that I made the mixed berry scones a little bigger and thicker than I made the red Roselle hibiscus. I did that on purpose, just like I did different sizes of scones on purpose. I do that because, you know, everybody likes a, a different amount for a serving. But I like my scones and my cookies and actually most big things done super well. Some might even say burned. I like them even darker than this, but I held back for your sake. But yeah, I cooked these a little longer and I made them a little um, thinner than the mixed berry ones I made for the family. So how about we try one out? First of all, up close view, doesn't it look scrumptious? This glaze on top is a lemon glaze. So this is red Roselle hibiscus. Let's just say Rosella. This is a Rosella lemon scone. Um, I used some lemon juice in it and I made a powdered sugar lemon juice glaze for the top of it. Now I didn't decide to make the scones until after I had used all of my uh, rosella for jam or dried it for tea. So I went ahead and used dried rosella for the scone. I read that you can make it either way, so we shall see. And then next year I'm definitely going to plant more, much more uh, red rosella. And then I will definitely use some fresh and freeze some fresh to use for baking. 
I was going to make tea for this video and enjoy it in front of the camera, but I do think most people know how wonderful Rosella tea is. So I decided to uh, celebrate and have wine instead. <laughs> now, why am I celebrating? Well, because the Vikings won today. The Minnesota Vikings won today. Yeah, they're my team. They're my family's team. And um, they're having a great year for once. And it was a super close, exciting game. And they won. So yeah, I'm definitely celebrating. Plus, I'm celebrating how great the scones turned out. All right, trying them on camera. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Okay. If you like cranberry orange scones, these are extremely similar, but way better. <laughs> Seriously. I love scones and I love cranberry orange scones. Oh, this, this turned out great. I used coconut cream in it instead of regular cream. This is so good. Mmm. Just tender and flaky. And the reason I say it's better than the orange cranberry scones are is because it's even tangier. It has an even more citrusy taste. Like I mentioned earlier in the video when I was making the jam, it definitely is like a combination of rhubarb and lime, which are flavors I absolutely love. So that's definite win. Make some scones. And it works great with dried uh, rosella. So, I mean, I will try it with fresh just because I want to compare, but it's really good with the dried stuff. And I didn't have to use too much. I just used probably two tablespoons of dried rosella. So I will put the recipes for both the scones and the jam in the description below. So what else can you make with your rosella? Well, I didn't make it this time around because I only had uh, two plants, one big one and one small one, and I started them late. And I consider I, ha I had a great harvest from them, but now that I know how much I love them, I'm gonna plant a lot more next year. And with those, one of the things I'm gonna do is make candied rosella. So the way you do it, after much research I've discovered, is you pop the seed pod out, and there's lots of easy ways to do that. Now for making the jam, I find peeling them super easy and I'll just keep doing it that way. But with the uh, candied rosella, the goal is to get that shape of the calyx, that's like a uh, upside down cone, intact before you candy it. So you wanna pop that seed pod right out the top and it's really easy to do with something like a, a straw, a metal straw, or some people use like the bottom of a butter knife. If you have a dowel, uh, like a wooden skewer, that would work great to pop it out. It doesn't take much force. And so you pop all those pods out and then you're gonna coat them in a sugar syrup. And then there's different ways of drying them depending on how dry you want them and when you're gonna eat them. And we'll explore that next year when I harvest a whole ton of rosella. Another thing that I want to explore using the rosella with is some uh, alcoholic drinks because they're known widely for being great for that. And I can imagine that because I've experimented with say pomegranate and some other fruits making um, alcoholic spritzers. Oh, my kumquats. I think in one of my recent videos when I harvested kumquats, I made a kumquat margarita, a kumquatarita. <laughs> so it's always fun to take fruit and make new drinks with them. And that's definitely something you're gonna be trying with the rosella. But after having baked these absolutely delicious scones with the dried rosella today, I can tell you one thing, I'm gonna be baking a lot with these. I'm gonna bake muffins, I'm gonna bake coffee cakes, a lot. And you know what I thought of when I made the jam? If I didn't thicken this so much, it would be a fantastic syrup. I don't know that I would want it on pancakes. Well, the kind of pancakes I make in general, which are far less sweet than your typical pancake, um, it would be good on that because I make uh, a gluten-free whole grain one mixed with a lot of flax seed and they're, they taste really good, but they're not sweet at all. But if you added this as a syrup, it'd be fabulous. Yeah. But what I was really thinking is that a Rosella syrup would be really good on say ice cream or cheesecake. Yeah, definitely it would make an excellent cheesecake topping. So that's gonna get tried out next summer for sure. I think the possibilities with rosella or red rosella hibiscus are pretty much 
endless. You could do all kinds of things with it. And it has such a tangy, refreshing flavor. It's really going to enliven and um, make delicious just about anything you put it in. So thanks for joining me today, folks. I'm really glad you did, and I hope you took away something you can use for yourself, either this season if you've already harvested some rosella, or next, because these are a very easy plant to grow, very resilient, and super, super productive. They produce so many blooms, so many calyxes for you to use in so many ways, and so many seeds. Ah, and speaking of seeds... Something else you can do with the red rosella that I did not even think of, or I definitely would have saved some of the seeds, is you can take the seeds that are inside the pods and grind them up and use them as a coffee substitute. That is going to be fun to experiment with. So have a great week, everyone, and I will see you again next time. I still can't believe we won. Oh my goodness. My son works the night shift, so he's been sleeping and he's like the ultimate, ultimate fan. When he wakes up, he won't spoil himself. He'll just start watching the game. And oh, I'm gonna watch it again with him because I'll just love to see his reactions. <laughs> he's gonna be so happy.